What's going on everybody? I'm Tony. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Honda Grom race bike build. This video is going to be pretty cool because in my opinion we're going to be working on something that is long overdue. We're actually going to start painting the Grom. We're going to go through the process and hopefully we can actually get this done for under 25 bucks. We're going to prime, paint, and I've actually got some new decals for the front number plate there. So we're going to get rid of that electrical tape and actually make this thing look good once and for all. So as mentioned, we're gonna go through the process. We're gonna try and get this thing looking a little bit better than it currently does. In order to go through painting your Grom or your motorcycle at home, you're gonna need a couple of key things. Now I am in no way, shape or form an expert painter, but I can, I can hold my own with a rattle can. Um, I actually painted the Ninja 300 in the garage and it came out pretty dang good. So everything that you see here from the red to the black to the white, um, that was all masked off, individually painted. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and mimic the Ninja 300 paint job on the Grom. So what you're going to need is as follows. I like Rust-Oleum. You're going to need some primer. You need some paint. So I'm going with that red and black scheme. You're going to need a little bit of sandpaper, um, <laughs> a used mask. Uh, it's impossible to find actual masks right now. A little bit of denatured alcohol or some kind of uh, degreaser, tack cloth. And that's going to be pretty much all you need to get, to get this painted. But uh, what I've got to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the bodywork off of the Grom as it sits. And then we can start the process, get it sanded up. I'm going to build a little paint booth and uh, <laughs> we'll get to going on this thing. So if you've been watching for a little while, um, you'll know that when I picked up the Grom, it actually came with some really nice bodywork on it. Um, it. It's pristine. And you know, so I, I picked up the throwaway bodywork because I knew I was gonna be tracking it. I knew I was gonna be racing it. And I didn't wanna mess up the good bodywork. So I got really lucky with this. I got it for $30. Um, if you've ever looked for Grom plastics or Grom bodywork, you really can't touch an entire set for under a hundred bucks. So this was an absolute steal. Obviously it's not pretty. The guy that I bought it from looked like he was in the process of getting it sanded so that he could paint it, um, but ended up just going the route of buying an entire new set. Now I've got to clean up some of the sand marks. So I'll probably start with like a 400 or 600 grit, then go from there, get it primed, get it painted, and hopefully it comes out okay. If you've ever looked at painting something, especially rattle canning it, you, you may heard the notion that the devil's in the details. Well, with painting, the devil is in the prep. The prep work that you put into painting will 100% determine the outcome that you get. So I am going to spend some time. I'm going to get this sanded up. I'm going to get it, get it uh, primed, and I, I think it'll come out really, really well. That said, before I get into sanding, before I get into priming, you may have noticed that I took off a number plate on the Grom there. I got some new decals for those, and I'm really excited to see what they look like. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to go ahead and get those number plates set up, decals on. Uh, hopefully, they look as good as I think they will. That was insane. That was insanely easy. That is fantastic. I'll throw a little bit of heat at it just so that maybe it uh, activates and bonds a little bit better. But oh my gosh, I've never had any kind of, let's call it decal, uh, vinyl go down like that. This is like super thick stuff. It's like, I don't know, probably a mil thick. So maybe that's why. Wow, that looks fantastic. That looks amazing. All right, 
right, number plates are on. They look fantastic. Now I gotta move on to the dirty stuff. I've actually gotta start prepping the body work, getting it ready for primer. This is probably gonna be a two-part video um, because I've gotta go through, I've gotta sand, and I've got a prime, and then usually the primer takes, you know, anywhere between two or three days to actually dry up because after it dries, you gotta sand it again. But this is what I'm gonna be painting. I'm gonna be turning all of this red. And then the plan is to pull in a little bit of carbon fiber decal, just like we have here on the Ninja 300, maybe some specks of white, but um, that's kind of the plan here. So I'll go ahead and get the bodywork the rest of the way apart start sanding it, and then <laughs> probably build a paint booth of some sort so I don't get paint all over the dang place. So we're sanded up um, with that. Just make sure that you take your time. It had some pretty deep scratches in it. I didn't really show it on camera, but I was gonna start with like 400, 600. I had to start with 320 and then move my way up. So I hit it with 320, jumped up to 400. I'll throw some primer on it and then I'll sand it again with 600 after that primer dries. Um, I tried to build a paint booth as you saw, but <laughs> that, that didn't really go as planned. Uh, it is already falling down, but whatever it is what it is they're race plastics they're not going to be perfect and i'll deal with it now at the beginning of the video i did say that we were going to try and do this for under 25 dollars and i want to show you just real quick talk dollars around what you're potentially going to need if you wanted to paint your grom at home for 25 30 bucks so i went with some rust-oleum um, it works really well for me i feel like i can lay it down pretty easily but the primer you're looking at like 350 four dollars the paint anywhere between four to five dollars. I think honestly with what I'm gonna paint, I'd be able to get away with one can of each. I had a little bit left over. If I need to throw that down, I will, but total here in paint, let's call that 15 bucks. If you don't have sandpaper, just get yourself some automotive sandpaper. Higher the better, uh, 400, 600, 800, 1,000. That's really what you're gonna need in order to get a little project like this done. Tack cloth, I think you can have a, a one pack, two pack of that for like a dollar, two dollars maybe. And then I've got the denatured alcohol. You don't have to use something like that. I just wanna make sure that the parts are clean because if you get your fingerprints all over the part after you sand it, that sometimes reacts with the primer, reacts with the paint. So I like to just wipe it down with that alcohol. Now, that's not intended for automotive purposes. If this is like a really nice project that you're working on, you're actually gonna wanna get yourself like a wax and, and grease remover. Don't go with denatured alcohol. But um, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna set the parts up and we are going to start laying down some primer. When you lay down the primer, just read the instructions on the can. Start with light coats. Don't go super heavy, but light coats go a long way. So I'll probably throw one light coat and then one heavier coat. And I think that I'll be good, but um, let's set the parts up and we will get to painting. Remember as you lay this down, light coats are best. I'm gonna start with a super light coat get its tack and then I'll wait probably about five to ten minutes wait for the paint to flash and then I'll throw down another coat um, I know that these should be hanging but I'm working with what I got so, let's do it. so you're not going for coverage or at least I'm not going for coverage I just want a very light 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 layer just to give the next layer something to stick onto. Um, I would also make sure and call this out that if you're gonna be doing this inside, have some kind of respirator on. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my mask. And if you don't want paint on stuff, don't do it on a windy day like I am. Um, and make sure that you cover anything in your garage or wherever it is that you're painting so you don't have to deal with all the overspray because there will be overspray. I promise you that. All right, it's been about seven minutes. 
Uh, it's warm out, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw down the second layer. Um, got my respirator. My beard really doesn't fit in, but you know, it works. This coat's gonna be a little bit heavier. I'm gonna actually try for coverage this time. That's two coats of primer, one really light coat, and then one coat a little bit heavier just to kind of get it baked on and, and built up. Um, now, I said it earlier, the time that you spend prepping will determine really what your piece looks like. And even though I spent, you know, dang near an hour sanding this, there's still some relatively deep scratches in the fender and then on the little side pieces here. But I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sand it back down. I am gonna throw one more layer of primer on here but because you've already seen that in some capacity i'm gonna go ahead and call the video quits here um i don't know about you but this is this is really starting to look like something i'm excited that it's not multicolor. i'm really pumped that i got the electrical tape off of my front number plate there because those number plates look amazing but uh we're gonna let this dry up and in maybe two three days i'm gonna start laying down a little bit of color. I'm sorry I've got to break it down into two videos, but I want to make sure that I get this edited and uploaded in, uh, in a timely manner. But we, we, we are on our way, ladies and gentlemen. But um, I'm going to call it here. Thank you so much for dropping by. If you like the video, let me know. Hit that like button. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Again, I'm Tony. See you later. Bye.